Hello, dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we are discussing the mm, succinic acid again. Uh, it's a third video on this topic. We talked about um, it's, uh, what are these fun the functions of this acid. Uh, I told you that uh, it can be synthesized in our body in order to protect ourselves during stress, during uh, hypoxia, meaning low oxygen. Uh, it will protect, um, increase, uh, improve the survival of our cells. Uh, and uh, it can be also taken as supplements. And um, I told you about the clinical trials, that it can help in different heart problems, uh, vascular problems, in after strokes, in, uh, for example, diabetics, in neuropathy. And it's proved in the clinical trials uh, of Russia and post-Soviet countries. But when I was... Uh, re researching the studies available on succinic acid in cancer, I was very, very surprised and um, I would say even shocked. Why? Because in the topic of oncology, uh, this acid uh, is considered to be a real fool, a real enemy. Why? Uh, let's talk about it a little bit. First article, you know, before we were talking about uh, the metabolic theory of cancer, about uh, the changes in uh, mitochondrial function, about the lack of energy production by mitochondria, about the problems with TCA or tricarbonic acid cycle, Krebs cycle, the main chemical cycle inside the cells to produce energy. And we figure out that uh, uh, in normal cells, the cycle produces a lot of energy from one molecule of glucose. In cancer cells, uh, it uh, needs a lot of sugar to produce the same amount of energy. Because cancer cells cannot use oxygen in most cases. And we know that, for example, the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase, SDH, it helps to transform, to convert this um, succinate. But if uh, it is deficient or broken, then succinate won't be converted and it will be accumulating inside the cells and it will be uh, spilled out to the extracellular fluid, to blood and uh, cause some uh, reactions because it's also a signaling molecule. That means that this SDH enzyme that neutralizes succinate is anti-cancer protein inside the mitochondria. And this accumulating succinate, it helps to stabilize and activate HIF1. We'll call, the, call it HIF. It's a hypoxia-inducible factor or induced factor, uh, meaning that um, hypoxia is the low oxygen state, meaning during low oxygen it will be activated and uh, increased. Again, this HIF or hypoxia-inducible factors, they um, are accumulating in uh, hypoxia or low oxygen inside the tumors that is very common in human cancers. And this leads to uh, activation of different genes that will produce new blood vessels, so the metabolism and energy production will deteriorate even more. It will help the tumor cells to uh, migrate, to spread around and to metastasize. It will help to cancer stem cells to survive. It will help to evade our immune system and resist the uh, official types of treatments like uh, chemotherapy or radiation therapy. And our anti-cancer treatments are not working very well against these uh, tumors in the state of uh, low oxygen, only in the well-oxygenized tumors. So, low oxygen, through all these mechanisms, drives cancer progression, cancer growth and uh, metastasis. Again, this HIF, HIF, we see that tumor cells, they produce, uh, instead of producing uh, a lot of energy flow from glucose using oxygen, they don't use oxygen and they produce very few energy plus lactate. Uh, that's very important. That's acid, lactic acid. And uh, this shift from uh, oxidative phosphorylation from using oxygen to uh, fermentation, no oxygen, ancient type of energy production. It uh, helps the tumor to survive uh, in uh, the state of uh, hypoxia, of low oxygen. And here you can see also through succinate, 
uh, similar things happen when uh, there is infection uh, through some bacteria that will produce toxins. That means, and it explains why chronic inflammation, chronic infections may cause tumors. And this is well known factor, risk factor for cancer development. Interesting finding. When they checked many renal cancer specimens, they found out that this SDH that I talked in the very beginning, the enzyme in mitochondria that helps to transform the succinate and it's broken, reduced in up to 80% of all tumor specimens. And this critical break in the metabolism leads to tumor progression. By the way, what is interesting, vitamin C can help to reverse these effects of succinate. The same they found in other tumors, for example, some hereditary tumors. And uh, several studies showed that succinate works through its receptors. Uh, this is the abbreviation. And now they are trying to develop their drugs that will block these receptors and make the tumor defenseless against the treatments and against our immunity. Let's wish the good luck to the scientists. Here I showed it already in the previous video where I showed you cases of uh, people using metabolic approach for their cancer treatment. And again, because of this major problem with uh, energy synthesis, uh, we see that uh, tumors, they use fermentation and as waste products, uh, they get a lot of lactic acid, glutamic acid and succinic acid uh, that will acidify microenvironments and uh, leading to this progression, growth, uh, metastasis, invasion and resistance to immunity and our treatments. That's why in previous videos I was talking about glutamine, about keto diet, about uh, hyperbaric oxygenation, about ketone bodies uh, and uh, how they can help us in struggling with these uh, mechanisms of tumor resistance. Dear friends, I'm happy um, I managed to make a short video finally, because every time I'm planning to make it short, but always there are too many details and uh, I always uh, dive there and want to share everything. That's why it's always very long. This time I made it maximally short. I don't know if you like it or not. And I want to share some of my thoughts about uh, whether succinate can be used in oncology patients or not. Again, first of all, always avoid hypoxia, avoid low oxygen. Why? Because, again, low oxygen is connected to uh, high succinate. And um, we know that uh, low oxygen and problems with uh, energy production can be connected to tumor development and progression. And the second, if the per person has tumor, we know that most of the tumors, they don't use oxygen, but if we have a lot of oxygen in blood, it will help uh, the, to reverse tumor resistance, to attack it with free radicals, but our cells will enjoy having a lot of oxygen because it helps them to produce energy. That's why aerobic exercises, walking, walking in the fresh air, in the forest, uh, open uh, your windows, get fresh air, and uh, of course, uh, different breathing exercises and uh, hyperbaric oxygenation. Next, always treat chronic infections, inflammation, uh, gastritis, uh, pancreatitis, etc. And uh, no smoking, because smoking leads to chronic inflammation. Next, uh, obesity. Obesity is a risk factor for cancers, and uh, we know that Obesity is connected to chronic systemic inflammation in all the body. Next, uh, should you take it long term? I think not. If the patient is healthy, he can take it short term for some purposes that we were talking about in the first videos. In most cases, I wouldn't recommend uh, for cancer patients to take succinate, um, but let's consider several situations. First, there person comes to us, he doesn't have any cancer, uh, he has, for example, problems with his uh, arteries in his legs, he has uh, intermittent claudication, painful legs uh, during walking because his uh, arteries in legs are clogged, or he is diabetic and has some neuropathy, or maybe he has uh, heart problems. In this case, it's okay for him to take succinate, or just uh, to gain more energy, to be more active. 
uh, but it should be in uh, short courses. Next, uh, the patient comes to us. He is uh, he has cancer or had cancer before, or he is uh, having, uh, for example, chemotherapy now and has some tumor. Would we recommend him to take succinate? For example, he has neuropathy, numbness, tingling in his uh, arms after chemotherapy. Yes, according to some clinical trials, uh, succinate may help with um, neuropathy, but uh, we would not recommend this patient uh, this um, remedy. Better we use some alternatives, uh, like neurologists, they can prescribe uh, alpha lipoic acid or vitamins uh, group B. Uh, you can take some neurogenic mushrooms, for example, and uh, choline and uh, lecithin. Uh, in order to help um, your neural system to restore, but not succinate. And one more situation. The patient is brought to the hospital by ambulance. He cannot already walk. He's lying down. His situation is deteriorating. He has a lot of metastasis. He's uh, very weak. And um, what oncologist will say? They will say, okay, sorry, but we cannot give him any treatment, any chemotherapy, because chemotherapy is uh, toxic and poisonous and even you give it to the normal and uh, healthy person it will he will feel himself badly but if you give it to uh, the cancer patient who is in such a weak situation weak state of course uh, he these poisons may kill him that's why we uh, would not uh, use uh, chemotherapy on this patient mostly oncologists will say sorry we cannot help you anymore and um, why wouldn't we use this succinate uh, in intravenous infusions, for example, to this patient? Because uh, it really may help patients in critical conditions, in sepsis, in burns, in, for example, traumatic shock, in infarctions, myocardial infarctions. It may help them to protect, to restore his health a little bit, to become better. And afterwards, if it helps, we, he will get the chance to start his treatment. Why not in this case? Because here their benefits, uh, potential ben benefits are more than risks. That's why the approach must be individual and we must understand their risks and the benefits. And uh, think, uh, would we prescribe this or that drug? But again, this is just my thoughts, my opinion and my approach, not the law of universe. Dear friends, that's all for today. I would appreciate if you write any comment below. If you want to support the channel, please, there are links under this video also. I hope it was interesting for you. Wish you good luck. God bless you. Goodbye. Don't be